Jay here from Stretford Paddock. As you can see, I'm outside Old Trafford for the paper tuck where it's absolutely freezing, but I can't feel a thing because I'm nice and warm. It's the morning after the night before. One of those good mornings after, like when you wake up next to a stunner, as my missus does every morning. And no, she's not cheating on me before you suggest that. United, of course, beating Liverpool in the fourth round of the FA Cup 3 2 to go through to the fifth round, naturally. As you'd expect, a lot of the stories this morning centre around that game and the post match reaction. Um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer speaking to the press after the game, he was saying, for us, it's a good feeling to play on our terms. We found a way of playing that we believe in, that the players believe in. We are getting stronger and stronger. We've had some good results going with a diamond or a 3-5-2 to nullify the opponents. But today we had a positive selection. That's a statement to ourselves. Confidence boost that we can match the best with our style of football. He's also going on to say how it's not just a case of saying, OK, we've got a result you know, job done. He now wants to see a reaction going into the next game against Sheffield United. He said, um, I want to see the reaction, how we mentally go again. Everyone is elated and on a high. They should be. But tomorrow morning, I want to see players thinking about Wednesday, not today. So that's the mentality that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has and that he's instilling in his players, that sort of elite winning mentality that some people, not me, but others, have criticised him for not having. He's certainly showing that now, not resting on his laurels, not saying, OK, job done. It's a case of we look to the next game and that's obviously Sheffield United. Um, on the other side of the coin is Jurgen Klopp, who didn't have one of his customary meltdowns. Well, not that I've seen so far anyway. Um, he was insisting that Liverpool remain united. He said, don't worry about us. I don't. As a group, we are really together. And we have to solve it together. We are just in this moment and we tried to win football games again. Well, shot, yeah, you know, most people do. Um, so he's not happy, but Oli is, and that's all that matters. Oli's also been talking about Jesse Lingard. Jesse Lingard, of course, has been linked with a move away. There's a lot of stories about that that I'll get into in a minute. Speaking about Jesse, yesterday, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer said, Jesse trains this, trained this morning. He wasn't in the squad. So, of course, he wants to play football. We'll have to see, and I will sit down with Jesse and make a decision on what we're going to do. So far, he's been the ultimate professional, trained well with a small group this morning that we're not in a squad. I will sit down and see if anything comes up. I'm very happy to have him around, as I know he could have played today and done well. Now, Jesse Lingard, this has sort of been rumbling on and on and on. He's not been getting in the squad, as you can see from that, the quotes and you'll have seen from yesterday. He wasn't in it, of course. He hasn't been getting much football at all at Manchester United. He is still only 28. He's a, a guy that, you know, what, not that long ago, two and a half years ago, went to the semi-final of a World Cup with England and was a regular here for Manchester United. And now he can't even get in the squad. He can't get on the bench, let alone in the starting 11. So it looks like he could be going out probably on a loan deal uh, in January. And there's one or two club's interested. Now, there was a story in the Telegraph, I think it was James Ducker, um, I think it was yesterday, he said that uh, Lingard was awaiting the green light from Manchester United board after Solskjaer had agreed to a transfer request. Um, it says there that the final decision rests with United, United's board as Lingard waits for an answer amid considerable interest from several Premier League clubs. Now, one of those clubs that's showing interest, according to reports that were doing the rounds this morning in the local press in Birmingham, are West Bromwich Albion. Of course, Sam Allardyce has gone there. They're still up against it, still in a, a bit of a relegation dogfight. And it, apparently, according to reports there, Allardyce is keen to bring Jesse Lingard, amongst other players, to the Hawthorns. Now, when you look at where West Brom are, they're, I think they're about seven points, six points adrift from safety. So... They, they are in, as I said, a relegation dogfight, but you feel that with Sam Allardyce at the helm, if they got one or two signings in, you you'd, you'd might fancy them to get out of that. Now, another um, club that Jesse Lingard has been linked with, another one that are in a bit of a relegation dogfight, a Newcastle. Now, they're eight points clear of West Brom, and they're about, trying to do the maths here, seven points clear of the relegation zone, but they're in a bit of a rough patch, almost in free fall. So, Jesse Lingard may have to look at that and think, is it even better for me to go to West Brom because I've got a better chance of staying up? I don't know. It's up to Jesse Lingard. Newcastle, obviously, a massive club. Sheffield United have also been linked with him. Nice over in France were linked with him, but it looks like that deal is dead in the water. So we'll keep you posted on that one. Jesse Lingard, 
having a few suitors in the Premier League. Probably going to be a loan deal to the end of the season, but it may well be a permanent transfer. As I said earlier, we will keep you posted as to any developments. I think it is best for Jesse Lingard and for Manchester United if he does move on because he's not getting any football and at the age of 28, he's still got a lot to offer. And I think it's a bit sad as well because he gets a lot of stick, but you know, Jesse Lingard is a guy that's been here since he was a kid, came up through the academy, scored two goals in cup finals, um, you know, and should be playing football at this stage in his career regularly. And for me, should be playing football in the top flight of the Premier League. Uh, now, another story doing the rounds, and I mentioned this because it was all over social media. This is about Joel Glazer, um, one of the owners, of course, at Manchester United Football Club, who's, you know, done his best to bleed the club dry. Now, he also owned, the Glazer family also own the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, anyone who watches this channel knows I know less about American football or American sports than I do about English sports, and that's saying something. But... He was speaking last night publicly about the fact that Tampa Bay Buccaneers have got to the Super Bowl. And a lot of people are almost outraged about this because of the fact that he never speaks about Manchester United. We never hear the Glazer family publicly give interviews or speak about Manchester United. And they do do it about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which sort of indicates the feelings towards that franchise, if you allow me to use that word, and the, the club that they own here. This is seen far more as a business, as if we didn't know that, where that is seen something more, where they're heavily involved and they're more passionate about it. Um, lots, lots, a couple of journalists, Rob Harris was commenting on it saying, if you're a Man United fan, they tweeted, not particularly aggrieved with the Glazers' ownership, the lack of emotion they demonstrate around United could be more, could be irritating compared with more outwardly engaged with books and speaking publicly to fans, including the media, through media in Tampa Bay. So he's just pointing out there the fact that you've got the owners who never speak to the media here, but they'll speak to the media in Florida, in Tampa Bay, and always happy to do that. And it is a bit frustrating, but I'm sort of not past caring. I always care, but I don't expect anything from the Glazer family when it comes to Manchester United. That's just the way they've always been. And they're just going to carry on ignoring the media, ignoring the fans and doing what they can to make as much money out of Manchester United Football Club. Moving on to happier thoughts anyway. Bruno Fernandes has been speaking. He's been speaking after the game about Donny van der Beek. Now, I'm going to get into Bruno Fernandes a bit more in a minute. But speaking about Bruno, um, Donny van der Beek, Bruno Fernandes commented, I think he was speaking to MUTV, saying that if he was... Donny van der Beek, he wouldn't be happy at all because obviously Donny van der Beek hasn't been getting um, much game time. He played yesterday, he started against Liverpool, um, played relatively well, I felt, and you know, it was eventually, I think he came off, didn't he, in the end, but he, he had a, a good game. Um, now, Fernandez has admitted to MUTV, he sympathises with Donny van der Beek. He said, Donny had a great game. Playing in the position I play, watching him the moves really good and played really well. It's important for us, if I was in the position of Donny, I would not be happy at all. But the most important thing, but the most important is doing what he does today, coming in and helping the team. Now on that front as well, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, there was a report I think um, that started off in The Athletic, that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer promised um, Donny van der Beek that he could have some more game time. He's been. He sort of mentioned to him that he's, there's a story that was. I think the Daily Mail picked off it, picked up on it, but it emanated from the Athletic. Um, it says that Donny van der Beek has been promised more game time by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and has been assured he will get more game time as the season progresses. Now there's been a lot of talk, haven't there, about Donny van der Beek being unhappy or not, you know his agent making a bit of a bit of a noise about the fact he's not been getting that many games. But he's played a lot of. He's he's made a lot of appearances. He's not started a lot of games, Donny Van der Beek. But I think he's had almost is it you know over twenty games or something appearance wise. So Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has had a little chat with him apparently and assured him he's got a big part to play this season, which doesn't come as a surprise. We know that games are going to come thick and fast. We know Donny Van der Beek is obviously a talented player. He's obviously a young player as well. He's only in his early 20s. So it's not like he's come here and he's going to go straight into the team or if he doesn't, that's it. He's a waste of time and it's a waste of a move. He will play for Manchester United. He'll play a lot of time, whether that's this season, well, it will be this season, and also in the future as well. So I'm not quite sharing the despair that some people have for Donny van der Beek's lack of appearances. He's obviously got a big part to play for Manchester United. Another update or another comment from last night was the injury to Marcus Rashford. He had a, a, knee, a knee injury and he ended up coming off and going straight down the tunnel in around, I think it was around the 85th minute, was it? Uh, Solskjaer spoke about that and he said, Marcus felt his knee, we'll have to do a scan. Hopefully it's not too bad, but I'm not a doctor, so we'll have to see tomorrow, meaning today, obviously. So we'll keep you posted. Any updates on the injury to Marcus Rashford? I think it was... Um, I think he went into one of the hoardings or something, didn't he? Had a bit of a 
shove off Fabinho and ended up going into the side and, and banging his knee. So, as we were saying yesterday when we were on the watch long and after the game, sometimes a, an impact injury, it's not a good thing, obviously, an injury, but it's not as bad as a twist or something like that. So, hopefully, it won't be too serious. But, as I said, we'll keep you posted. Um, there's loads of bit to, uh, talk of this morning doing the rounds about Bruno Fernandes, his attitude, the way he spoke after the game and also what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was saying about him. Um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer commented on the free kick, said it was a great goal, good free kick. Yeah, obviously. Um, he also said that Bruno Fernandes, when he knew he wasn't starting, stayed out practising for 45 minutes and it worked. I was pretty, this is all he's saying, I was pretty confident he could score one if he got the chance. So, yeah, Bruno Fernandes finds out he wasn't playing, practises free kicks for 45 minutes and then scores a free kick against Liverpool to send us through to the fifth round of the FA Cup. You couldn't make it up, could you? He's just got such a great attitude. I just love Bruno Fernandes so much. It's ridiculous. Um, United wouldn't be United without a transfer rumour, so I'll give you one. The latest one is Jamal Musiala. Forgive me if I've butchered your name, Jamal. Um, he's a 17-year-old central midfielder, playing his trade for Bayern Munich. Actually, Bayern Munich's first team. I think he's played about 20 times this season for... Uh, for the German champions. Now, there's a story during the rounds this morning that he could be linked with a move to Manchester United. United are interested in him. It seems as though this is more an interest rather than he's set to move here to Old Trafford. Um, apparently, he's not signed a new deal at Bayern Munich and United are one of the clubs monitoring the situation and are interested in him. Um, it's reported, I think this has been reported in the evening news, have picked it up from goal and it was reported that Musiala's or Musiala's 100 pounds per week wage demands have been holding up transfer, uh, sorry, contract talks, and his deal's expect set to expire. I even get my words out. I'm that excited about yesterday's game um, in 2022. So United are one of the teams that are in for him. Looks like a great player. I don't know a lot about. It. I'm not going to pretend. Uh, he's actually born in Germany, but came over to England. Was at Chelsea's academy. Then he's gone back to Germany. Plays for he has played for the German, I think, under 16s, and also now plays for the England under-21s. Obviously, a very tight player. So, we'll keep our eye on that and see if there is any truth or any fire to that smoke. It's getting a little bit colder now and my hands are starting to freeze, so I'm going to wrap that up. We've got loads of good stuff coming up this week on the channel, as you would expect. We'll have the um, Shetford Paddock podcast later on today. We'll also have, the later on this week, or further on this week we're looking forward to the Sheffield United game in the Premier League of course we'll have the preview we'll have the watch along we'll have all the reaction from that we'll also have all the good stuff we'll have the House and Brew podcast you name it we'll have it on the channel so make sure you are subscribing if you're not doing and keep it tuned to Stretford Paddock I've been Jay this has been the Paper Talk don't forget to hit like share and subscribe thanks for watching